Back in the kitchen, Tom's showing yet again that he doesn't like taking the easy option. The mild flavour of pike is an acquired taste, so he's planning to take it up a level, enhancing the fish by smoking it, even if the equipment's new to him. So again, this smoker looks a bit daunting for me. Uh... I'm just making excuses if it doesn't work. Tom's a true gambler. He seems to thrive on uncertainty, in total contrast to Matt. So I know it's new to you, Tom, so how's this piece of cake going to work? Well, um, to say, with me having our own smoker outside, I'm not used to anything quite as Aye, small. That's it, yeah. I can do 20 sides of salmon at once. Well, that's put Tom firmly in his place. So we put the oat chips yeah. on the bottom. I know today you can get all these like fancy apple and yeah. you know, but it's really not my style, not that sure. kind of thing. I like to keep it simple. Yeah. Old chicks on the bottom, put a nice grill on top, and then this goes underneath. Yeah. If he gets the timing wrong, this could be a disaster. Ideally, it should only take about 10 minutes to cook sure. the fish if it's at the right temperature, yeah. but I'm not so sure. It's all the more difficult because the pike's been frozen. Everything with frozen fish is different. You know, you, know, you don't know when it was killed, the texture, so the meat's full of water. There's nothing better than fresh fish. On the other side of the kitchen, Matt's confidently steaming ahead with the preparations for his fish course, prawns with minted pea puree and carrot foam. So is that you're going to start the, the pea puree, puree, is it? Pea puree, yep. So I'm just going to have a wee base of uh, some shallots. I'm just going to finely dice them and uh, just sweat them off a bit of butter. The shallots are followed by frozen peas, sugar, chicken stock and cream. Tom's making a puree too, but he's using cooked beetroot to go into his salad dressing and garnish. These strong colours are fabulous, aren't they? Talk about bold, modern presentation. They'll look great on the plate. Sherry vinegar. But the dishes need to taste good too. I'm going to uh, process a bit more of a hammer taste in It needs a bit more seasoning through it as well. I need to put some salt and pepper in it. And I just need to put a bit of, uh, oh, it's nice and creamy. Bit of vinegar in it. Tom can now mix beetroot puree into his dressing, one of three ways he's using beetroot to accompany his smoked pike. As usual, Matt seems to have all the time in the world. With typical attention to detail, he's carefully husking peas to add texture to the puree that he'll serve with his prawns and carrot foam. But that isn't Tom's style at all. He combines loads of ingredients to a point that Matt sees as excessive. It's very easy to overcomplicate a dish to put too many flavours on it. So therefore, I think you know, three or four flavours in one dish is probably enough. Still to come, Matt's all at sea when he's fishing for his ingredients. Oh, well, Matt, you've got to get rid of the cream. If you don't get it within three seconds, you're mince like. And will our two chefs like one another's fish courses? So. So, Tom, what stage are you at now? I'm not drowning yet, anyway. <laughs> Tom serving smoked pike with beetroot, watercress, and horseradish creme fraiche. I've still got to smoke the fish, so that'll be a, that'll be the big test. Yeah. Waiting for me to finish. No, no.